Weren't you a friend of, like a good friend of Hillary Clinton's at one point? What happened that, now I know you, you're very, very Why down on her. Me? What happened? Down on her? Well, you, I think you oh. accused her of being a murderer on Twitter, didn't you? I did not. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And then you know I'm going to find that tweet in the next 40 seconds, it, right? <laughs> I deleted it. Joining him now to discuss the fact a significant chunk of the Trump base thinks a lot like Roseanne Barr, MSNBC contributor Jennifer Rubin, conservative columnist The Washington Post, MSNBC political analyst Sam Cedar, host of the Majority Report podcast, and MSNBC political analyst Jason Johnson, politics editor at The Root. Um, Jennifer, let me start with you. Th that statement uh, that there's a, there's a significant chunk of the Trump base that has this sort of paranoid conspiracist, racist worldview, what do you think of that statement? Well, I've made the same comment and got the same criticism you did, Chris. So uh, you're not going to get much of an argument against me. Listen, I think there are people in Trump's space who are simply um, traditional Republicans who, anytime there's a guy with an R after his name, are going to pull the lever. There are people who are true racists, who are part of this conspiracy mongering, part of the alt-right. And then there are people, frankly, who are just too passive, who say, oh, yeah, he's a racist, but he's a racist, mm -hmm. but yeah, he takes kids away from their parents at the border, but, um, and frankly, that's a form of racism, too, and I think those people have gotten too much of a pass. So when Roseanne Barr comes along and says um, what at least um, a significant chunk, as you say, of his voters think, um, lo and behold, ABC, they should have known this before, decides, uh, I don't think that's what ABC wants to be associated with, so they dump her. It's better than what the Republican Party has done, I'll tell you that. Well, well, you know, Sam, part of what's remarkable to me, too, is when you go back and look at, and I don't know, like, Roseanne Barr, I loved that show when it was first on, the first one. I think she's very talented. I think she's very funny. Like, I, I have, like, still a lot of vestigial affection for Roseanne sure. Barr. Um, <laughs> and I don't know what she's gone through. I don't know where she's at, like, in her state. But if you go through that Twitter feed, like, it's nutty. It's super nutty, sure. and it's nutty in a way that relates to, like, Michael Flynn Jr., the, yeah. you know, the president of National yeah. Security son, tweeting Pizzagate stuff. It's all of that ilk. There, there's two things that's going on. One is that this is not a Trump phenomena, okay? Right. I mean, look, um, you had the last... John Boehner was asked on this network, will you tell right. the 10 people in your caucus who are trying to bring up some bill about uh, Barack Obama's birth certificate, no, that's not my job. Uh, the years in which they kowtowed to Rush Limbaugh, I mean, I professionally would follow every congressman from the Republican Party who would kowtow to Rush Limbaugh because they, uh, and, and Rush Limbaugh was peddling this stuff. I mean, this is where the uh, Hillary Clinton is a killer comes from. It comes from yep. decades of Rush Limbaugh saying this on his radio programs with absolutely no accountability, no response from the Republican Party for decades, for decades. And what's happening with, with, uh, with Roseanne is not about Roseanne. It is about pent-up demand for accountability. People watch Donald Trump get away with this. Yes. Similar to the Me Too movement, there's no accountability coming from the guy from the highest position in the land, and they are, they, she becomes a proxy for that demand. Jason, what did you want to say? Yeah, well, I want to add to this. There are levels. There's levels of conspiracies, right? There's conspiracies born of being an oppressed community. I'm a black person. We have all sorts of conspiracies in the black community, <laughs> born of the fact that you've had the Tuskegee experiments, and every other week you find police officers saying, hey, you know, pull over black people. Some conspiracies are actually born of actual experiences that people are having in this country. What is problematic about the kind of Scooby-Doo logic that you have from Roseanne Barr and a lot of people who support Trump is they're not based on anything. Thing. They're not based on communities actually suffering as a whole. They're based on a desire to change the world into an attacking place to justify the authoritarianism that I, they want. So that's why it's much more dangerous than the kind of conspiracies that you might I, hear from actual other communities. I just think, and also, Jennifer, I mean, to, to, to the point about Roseanne, and, and I keep thinking about that Michael Flynn uh, Jr. Uh, Pizzagate tweet, you know, who's tweeting this while someone shows up with a gun at this at the pizza store in, in D.C., and Don Jr. retweeting a really vile thing Thing to say about George Soros, which is, let's be clear, part of a long-standing right-wing conspiracy theory about George Soros, just where people, like, the breadth of the reach of that kind of information, it really makes me think about that. How much mind share does George Soros was a Nazi have right now, and it's bigger than it should be? Right. I think what we discovered in 2016 is it was much bigger than we thought. Listen, there were people who, for 
instance myself, who were comfortable within sort of the mainstream. Sure, I was a little squishy, but within the mainstream of the Republican Party, I like John McCain, I like people like Lindsey Graham. But I tolerated those people because I thought they were a minuscule section of the Republican Party. That apparently was wrong. Bad yes. on me. They're a much bigger group than we suspected. Yes. And Donald yes. Trump helped elevate them. He well, fired the them up. Thing. He brought them out of the woodwork. Um, and now we see them in all their glory. And they have, in fact, taken over the Republican Party. You so. know, as much as much uh, grief as uh, organizations that highlight what these people are saying get. You know, you take a guy like Ben Shapiro, who is being feeded in all of these mainstream magazines uh, as the, the new conservative philosopher. This is a guy who trades in those very same George Soros uh, myths. I mean, they trade on these things as if they are, um, they, are, they are gospel. I mean, you can hear someone like Dana Loesch a year or two ago talking to Ajit Pai when he was going around years ago about net neutrality, saying, you've got to be careful. I'm, su I'm surprised you're not going to get Vince Fostered. Now, I had to explain to the 30-year-olds who work in my office what that meant. But there is a whole group of <laughs> people in this country who knew exactly what right. she meant just on those two words. And, 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 Jason, I thought you made a great point. I, I want to say the same thing, which is that people of all political persuasions and ideologies have... Right conspiracy theories. There's all kinds of information out there that people get their hands on. Uh, I run into people all the time who say, I heard this, is this true? And I say, no, that, right. that is not true. Um, but the, the, the real, the difference, I think, a lot of it is what the market is and what the gatekeepers are doing. And here you have Donald Trump going on Alex J Jones saying, you have a great re reputation and playing footsie with these people throughout his campaign and presidency. Right. And, and Chris, and here's how this extends to being dangerous for our democracy as a whole. When you have a president who peddles in conspiracy theories that can constantly be disproven, right? I mean, he's like, 8 million Hispanic people voted illegal, and it's like, no, that's not true. And even the author of the study that you're quoting says it's not true. It makes it very difficult for our democracy to function. I have thought about this heading into 2020, possibly 2024. Will there be an election we can have in America that Donald Trump will think is legitimate? Right. Probably not. And if everything is a conspiracy theory, we may face a serious constitutional sovereignty crisis in this country yeah. if, with, if this guy loses in 2020 Look, because he'll say it was a whole bunch of bots and, and, and Hispanic Hillary supporters that did it. Let me just say, today was the day, I believe, the report was issued by the state of New Hampshire, which looked into the claim that I think it was the president and others had said thousands of illegal votes uh, uh, in New Hampshire. They had did a uh, audit, a comprehensive analysis of the millions of votes uh, cast in New Hampshire uh, or hundreds of thousands of votes and found five, a total of five. <laughs> Jennifer Rubin, Sam Cedar, and Jason Johnson, thanks for being with me Thank tonight. You. Before thanks we go, quick reminder, you can get this show all in with Chris Hayes as a podcast.